Welcome. I'm at Cape Des Lacs above Clifton Beach in southern Tasmania. I'm here in the Muttonbird Rookery to have a go at filming them. As a young 20 year old I used to live down here. Uh, I spent most of my time surfing, eating crayfish, diving, spearfishing, all those sorts of things. Fantastic life. During the day these rookeries are a very peaceful, quiet sort of place and it's hard to know that anything's really going on. It's only under the cover of darkness that the birds come in and at night uh, all hell breaks loose. Mountain birds in one sense are a well known bird because of the harvesting uh, and the uh, smoked mutton birds you can get. Uh, but in the other sense we never see them because they're always uh, way out to sea or they come in in the darkness. So that's my challenge for episode 5 of Animal Workshop. See if I can film these birds at night in the rookery. The first thing I want to discover is do the mutton birds come in when there's still just enough light left in the sky to, to fill them with the ambient light? Well it's now about 11 o'clock, all the mutton birds are in, in their nests. Um, basically I waited and waited and it got less and less light. Um, and it was about half an hour after I ran out of uh, f-stops and ISO settings before they started to appear. And despite the fact that it's a full moon tonight, or almost a full moon, I think it's tomorrow night, um, there still wasn't enough. Uh, ambient light there to film them. So I'm going to have to work out an artificial uh, way of lighting, lighting them uh, without scaring them all off. The chicks of these birds have been harvested since uh, uh, the beginning of time I guess uh, by the Aboriginal peoples. Um, but more recently there's been a small commercial harvest take place. Um, today I think the uh, harvesting of the chicks is more a cultural uh, pursuit rather than actually a money-making business. Um, if we all wanted to eat mutton bird, there wouldn't be many left very quickly. The young chicks are uh, left in the nest after the, uh, the adults leave, and they're full of oil and full of uh, uh, energy ready for, to make their long flight. And this is what the, um, uh, uh, the mutton birders are after. They're after the little chick's body, um, which is soldered down and, and kept. Quite often they're smoked as well. So just as a first try, I've taped these two $12 LED flashlights, just two AA batteries in them, and I've just put two on the um, rods of my uh, camera housing to see how they go. It's not often that one of my ideas seems to work uh, the first time. It needs a few more improvements, but uh, I'm really quite surprised about this. Um, $24, that's a big saving on what I'd pay if I uh, had to buy one. Um, the shortcomings is I need light above it, obviously. I probably need a little bit more light. The torches are also a very blue light, so I'm going to have to sort of, uh, I'm fixing that in the, the, um, the white balance. I've got the, uh, the Kelvin set at 7,500. If I was to um, use a similar method to film you know, uh, wallabies or quolls or things like that, I think I really need a, um, uh, a, a much warmer light and not try to fix it in the, with the white balance. Um, but these birds are black, so I don't think it really it matters so much with the mountain birds. <laughs> the adult birds first turn up uh, in uh, mid-November. Um, the first thing they do is clean the burrows out, then they disappear for a while, and come back uh, late November, early December to lay the eggs. Uh, during this period, there's very little mortality among the adult birds. Uh, nevertheless, every morning you'll see uh, the predators out there cleaning up. They're more scavenging. You'll see the swamp harrier, uh, ravens, um, a wedge-tailed eagle and uh, the sea eagle as well. The season really only starts for the predators when the uh, chicks hatch in mid-January. These small birds that seem so clumsy on land uh, fly all the way around the Pacific Rim each year on the annual migration. They're also able to dive up to 20 metres under the sea to chase small fish and krill. So 
So I'm just uh, better attaching those two torches on the bottom of the uh, camera. I'm um, spreading them out a bit. Uh, and I'm going to put the, an extra one on top. Just a few technical things about these torches. They've got a, they're an energizer torch with two AA batteries. They have five LED lights in, in them, uh, globes in them, which are very directional. They're, they're very much a spotlight sort of light. Uh, they're 55 lumens each, so that's 165 lumens altogether, which is a fairly low amount. Uh, um, but I really only want to light up the area that I'm filming, which is with a telephoto, it's a fairly small, small area. So this is the uh, the top bracket. I'm putting it quite a bit above the camera, so I lose that. I get the, the top of the bird's the head very well defined. That's what I'm after. That's probably the main part of the bird to, you know, visually. Uh, so I've got that nice and high. Perhaps I need two above it. We'll see. It's now about three o'clock in the morning. There are mutton birds absolutely everywhere. I've got the three lights on the camera and working, so let's just see how it goes. As you can see, I'm getting that head well defined now. That's what I was really wanting. That's the, probably the most important part. Uh, so it seems to have worked quite well. Uh, one of the problems is though, uh, most of these birds are about four or five metres away. Get more than six metres away and uh, we run out of light. Um, probably an improvement for this would be to use a dimmable, a uh, LED dimmable 12 volt light. Um, and then just set your camera on the uh, um, 3200 ISO at f4 or whatever. And then change the, uh, the amount of light that you're using for the distance that you're filming. And um, I think I know a way, way I can do that, so uh, stay tuned to a later video. There are these bear patches around the edge of the cliffs, and I think I've worked out now what, they, what they're for. What the birds do is they come down, they waddle around at night, and they congregate in these sort of bear patches. Then all of a sudden they'll take flight, now, which is really an amazing to watch because one minute they're clumsy, they're falling over the ground, you think, these birds are never going to fly. Next minute they spring off and they're gone, they've just gone off into the dark. And they'll fly around overhead and they really move quickly, so I'm standing there filming, and next thing, whoosh, past the back of my head, I feel a mutton bird going past at, you know, at high speed. It's awesome to be out here with all these mutton birds around me. They're coming out of the burrows and they're flying over my head. It's a, a real special wildlife event. Um, I'm going to finish this episode uh, uh, here, but I'm going to be down here later because once the adults leave, the uh, chicks will stay in the nest for another two weeks. Now, overnight, apparently they come out and they practice flying. They teach, teach themselves to fly. Uh, so I wouldn't mind seeing that. Now you might remember in episode 4, the last episode, I filmed some passerine birds and a little sort of hide uh, bird bath setup I set up, uh, made. Now I've been going back to that, I've been trying to get closer. I was filming at 3 metres then, I'm now down to, to um, 1.9 metres. Uh, the focal length of the camera is at uh, 1.5, so I've got far to go. The problem is though, they just jump out of the frame so quickly you can't follow them around. But I am getting some footage and uh, to get that close is, uh, is quite interesting. Thanks very much for watching, um, press the thumbs up or whatever and uh, I'll catch you next time.